Good morning, everyone. Um, <clears throat> if you uh, look in the notices, you'll find that there's uh, lots of uh, events taking place later in June. Uh, so I would encourage you to, uh, to look at the, uh, the notices. But uh, just a reminder about the forthcoming events for this week. Uh, today we have the second of our four-part series on the Disciples, which starts at 6.30 p.m. and is led by Steve Oliver, who's with us this morning. Um, then on Saturday the 15th of June, there's the Porchester Gala um, and St. Mary's Youth are running a tombola stall uh, and need donations of prizes for that stall. Uh, apparently we're very short of items this year and we'll welcome anything new or in good condition that could be used for prizes. Uh, please leave them in the north transept. Sheila, uh, also, Sheila and Nell will be selling their jams and chutneys by the church path. Um, the other item that I want to draw attention to is actually on the 29th of June. Uh, it's the annual tea and company cream tea at Stansted Park Garden Centre. Um, Brian Gerard has made the arrangements. Um, the tea is under uh, five pounds, I believe, or under five pounds. Uh, if you would like to go, please contact Rachel and Eric Standen um, to reserve places uh, or leave a message in the parish office. Um, if anyone is willing to offer a lift, then your cream tea will be paid for. So there is bribery and corruption. Well, bribery anyway. <laughs> So um, there we are. Um, we can, uh, well, I'm now handing over to Ian, who's got a brief notice for us. Just like to speak for a couple of minutes about a presentation that we're having today at the end of the service, just to let you know about it. Um, as you know, we have a parish office with a wonderful parish administrator, Chris Hayes. Uh, but are there times, perhaps, in the evenings and in the weekends when you phone up the parish office and you find it's out of hours and you just have to leave a message, not open again until Monday, but there's some information that you really do need? Or do you ever phone up the vicar to find out something and you get the answer phone, which you will get 99% times the answer phone? And sometimes he wouldn't even get a call back because uh, sometimes he's got, a new, he's got a new phone and sometimes he doesn't always aware that there are messages waiting. Uh, and of course there is also the internet, the website, which is uh, open to the public and uh, is not always kept up to date and doesn't always have the technology. So at the end of this service for about 10 minutes, just for 10 minutes, there will be a presentation on uh, a new uh, media program that we're bringing out called Church Suite. Uh, just to let you know that uh, today the sermons will be very short, uh, if at all, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a program called Church Suite, and Chris Hayes and Steve Holliver are going to explain it at the end of the service. For example, if you want to know who's on the rota, who's taking part in the services, if you want to change the rota, uh, it's, it'll all be on there. If you want to know more information about parish giving, etc., it'll all be on there. If you want to know uh, contact details of people who have allowed their contact details to be shared, it will all be on there. There will be the facility for recording sermons, which will all be on there as well. And there'll, there'll be diaries of exactly what's happening on in the church. There'll even be the vicar's diary, the things that he's doing in the church. But this will not be open to the public, unlike the, web, the website. It will not be available to the public. And the only people whose details will be on it will be those who have allowed their details to be on it. It's really just a way of, shall we say, communicating and keeping in touch knowing what's going on, and it's really an information hub that's going to bring, hopefully, the whole church together. The final thing that I just want to say is this, that I am aware uh, that not all of you uh, indulge in such modern technology. 
Uh, some of you, of course, are not on email, and that's why you get paper uh, magazines instead of uh, email magazines. Uh, we do not uh, expect you, therefore, to stay on for this, unless, of course, your grandchildren might like to do it for you. So if at the end of the service you feel that this is really of no relevance, you'll never be using this, then do feel free to leave at that point. Uh, and I've got paper copies of the church magazine for you. But as I say, it'll only be 10 minutes. And uh, it, it will be worthwhile once we get into it and we get into the swing of it. Uh, th lots of churches are using it throughout the United Kingdom. I don't want to exaggerate by saying thousands, although Chris might know, but there's certainly hundreds and many of them around here. It's a great way of just knowing what's going on. So thank you for that. Good morning. It's lovely to be with you all. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. We begin by saying our prayer of preparation together. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. And write all these, thy laws, in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church, and so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Charles, our king and governor, that he, knowing whose minister he is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all his subjects, duly considering whose authority he hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey him in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. And our collect for this, the second Sunday of Trinity. Faithful Creator, whose mercy never fails, Deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The epistle is written in the second book of Corinthians, chapter 4 beginning at the 13th verse. Just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, 
Everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel is that written in St. Mark, chapter 3, beginning to read at the 20th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. The crowd came together again, so that Jesus and his companions could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons he casts out demons. And he called to them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. Truly I tell you, people will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit can never have forgiveness, but is guilty of eternal sin. For they said, for they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O God, help us to listen to your word with understanding, to receive it with faith, and to respond to it with courage. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Ian said a thought for the day which officially on the radio I think is 90 seconds, but I can't guarantee I'm only going to be 90 seconds. And I was very tempted, I must admit, when I read the Corinthians reading this morning, there was just one sentence that came out at me. It said, so we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. And I thought that's exactly how I'm feeling sometimes, the age I am now, but I won't focus on that. I will go back to the gospel. And we have Jesus, don't we, talking to a crowd again. His very attractive personality and his teaching style with his warm approach brought the crowds out to hear him. But we also know that in all the people who came, those who were inquisitive and wanted to hear more, there were also those who were very unfriendly. The scribes were finding him increasingly dangerous because of their status, and as one commentator put it, set about one of the most efficiently destructive forms of attack, the malicious rumor. 
I think there must have been social media in those days as well, because malicious rumours seem to get around, don't they, very quickly. And if you want to destroy somebody, that's the way to do it. And that was exactly what they did. They said Jesus was in league with the devil and was casting out demons by the power of Satan. Basically, they were saying, we don't need to believe him because all his seemingly good works come from evil. And if they recognized that Jesus worked by the power of God, they would have had to have accepted his, his authority and status and would have lost all their own. You can imagine then how Jesus' family felt. They were concerned and worried for him, exactly as any family would be today. Possibly confirmed for his, concerned for his safety as well, I would have thought. And it's interesting that his reply to them is very similar, isn't it, to what he said when he was 12 and remained in the temple in Jerusalem. And I guess that probably would have reassured them and also taught something to the people who were listening to him now. You should have known I would be about my father's business in his house. That's still what he's doing. And it's actually an amazing response, for as he was doing God's will, teaching and healing and bringing wholeness to people's lives, his way of love was not to reject the family, but to broaden the boundaries of human family love to include those who wanted to be part of God's family. That's why I always enjoy baptisms. We're making that child a part of that family, the family of our church, but also introducing them on the first steps of their Christian journey. And that's what Jesus was doing here. That close family relationship was to be extended to everyone who did the will of his heavenly father. It's an amazingly inclusive and an open invitation to join with him, one we can take with us today. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was satisfied also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him?
All things come of thee, and of thine own do we give thee. for the church and for the world and we thank God for his goodness. In this week when much has been of remembrance of people's courage and bravery, of liberation and freedom, we give thanks for all those who have been remembered we give thanks for our freedom. We give thanks for the freedom to worship, to be ourselves. We give thanks for your church, Father God, for all who have remained faithful to you, for all who have seen beyond the temporary to the eternal, for all who have been our inspiration. We continue to pray for the church where it is being persecuted, where Christians suffer for their faith. Lord, be a strength to all who are losing hope. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. you are a God of peace, and we pray that peace for countries broken by war, for people facing violence and hatred, for peoples being discriminated against. We remember those being robbed of their homes or their land or their livelihood. We pray for those who flee and become refugees. And we thank you for the people who support them Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the area in which we live, for the communities to which we belong, for our friends and our families. We pray for those in need of any kind. We remember those who have asked for our prayers, either through our prayer list or our prayer board. And we pray for those we hold on our own hearts. Lord, in your mercy, Father God, extend our vision that we may look beyond what we see to the eternal. We remember all those who see you in that glory which is beyond measure for our own loved ones departed. We pray for those who mourn this week those whose funeral services will be taking place and ask your loving peace to surround them. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, 
our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth fell full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Yes, it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, 
in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen.
As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth, until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand to say the Gloria together. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive <coughs> the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. Thou we art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.